one of the big things that comes up when you own a 3D printer is somebody else asking you, hey, what 3D printer do you recommend? And that is so much more complicated than it honestly has any reason to be. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you really want to get into 3D printing, we talk about it quite a bit here. So leave a like and get subscribed if you think we've earned it. It's going to be a lot to talk about here. So let's just jump right into it. It is very common that we get people asking us all about, well, what printer should I buy? Grant, what printer should I buy? And I have some questions, but I recognize very quickly that I'm not always asking the right ones. And so I asked our Patreon members in our Discord server. By the way, if you want to join the elite group of Musketeers, the $10 tier or higher, Patreon linked in the description down below. And they all kind of said different stuff, which was really cool to get different answers to this. But the big thing was always, well, two big things, really. How much money do you have to spend? And how much time do you have to spend? Because ultimately, you can spend less money, but you end up spending more time. And if you're the type of person that it just needs to work out of the box, the answer is buy a Prusa. It may be bamboo at some point, but they're still in probationary period for me. When we look at those machines, the problem is a Mark III S, damn near $1,000 by the time you're done. I do highly recommend getting the kit for your first printer. Not a lot of people are gonna choose that option because it's a little daunting. Then you look at the mini, but the mini is small it's seven inches cubed or 180 millimeters cubed and that's a problem for newbies as well because they think they're gonna print all these grandiose things and if you're like the guy that called me earlier to get some stuff printed who wanted a helmet he wanted a boba fett helmet the cost that it would be to outsource it to somebody like us just go buy your own printer it's for his kid, his kid is 12 really you know kind of into arts and crafts and that's where like a 3d printer is perfect and he said, well, what's a good printer? I said, well, here you go. It all came down to the budget. If you only got a couple hundred bucks to spend, honestly, an Ender or an Ender clone is hard to beat. Now, I'm personally not gonna be supporting Creality for a long time until they get their shit together when it comes to Creality Cloud. And a few of the other things which we've talked about, we'll link to those videos up in the card there. Ultimately, I think that the Elegoo Neptune 3 is gonna be one of the best bang for the buck, medium size 3D printers on the market, period. Now, I don't have one. I've reached out to Elegoo to get one for review, but they returned with a comment saying, not until you have 10,000 subscribers, so help. But the Neptune 3 at like 210 bucks on Elegoo's website is honestly one of the best deals that I can see for a 3D printer that should viably work out of the box. The Neptune 3 solves a lot of the problems that I have with the original Ender 3 V2, which we do recommend. And honestly, if you are near a Micro Center, the OG Ender 3 for a hundred bucks from Micro Center is an absolute steal of a deal, even just for the motion components alone. But Micro Center's 15 hours round trip for me, so the gas would cost more. We look at the Neptune 3. It's got auto bed leveling. It's got a really nice screen on it. It does not have an all metal extruder. While it is Bowden, it does really tick a lot of the boxes for me in terms of a affordable FDM 3D printer with a 16 point bed level. Its build volume is pretty good at 220 by 220 by 280. That's nine by nine by 10 inches, which is pretty respectable all things considered it does use v wheels which will need you know some help throughout the years but that's okay it has silent stepper drivers so it's not going to be very loud it's got a magnetic pei flex plate of course the removable touch screen as well as so many other features that i think honestly make it a pretty good buy if you're willing to wait because right now it is still in the pre-order stages if you want something with better documentation where, okay, I just kind of need it to work. The Prusa Mini is a pretty difficult printer to get by. At 550 bucks delivered for the mostly assembled kit and a 45 minute basically painless assembly. In fact, I raced the better three quarters to build one. We'll cart that video so you guys can take a look. And she was within 15 minutes of me. Someone, I've built well over a dozen 3D printers in my day and she's built 
one-ish. But we wanna also ask what materials they're gonna be printing. Is it gonna be mostly PLA? Well, then a non-all metal printer is perfect. But if you wanna start getting into materials like ABS, even PETG, polycarbonate, nylon, or anything crazier, you're going to absolutely need a 3D printer with an all metal HANA. Now you can of course upgrade a more affordable printer, but again, that is that time versus money. And for some people, they may not wanna do that upgrade. So buying a printer upfront with a better piece of kit all the way around might be more beneficial, like the Mark 3S that can basically print effectively anything that it needs to, which is pretty convenient. And when we look at what else is out there, there are tons of printers. And there are good deals on those printers. Like I have a CR10 V3 clone, which is a big printer, 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. And I got it on sale for $185 on an Amazon Prime deal. I don't care how much work I have to do to that. That's a good price. Put a flex plate on it, put an auto bed leveling kit on it, all metal hot end. I'll be done with that in two to three hours worth of work. By the way, get subscribed because that is going to be a live stream, we're gonna upgrade that printer to turn it into a workhorse printer for the print farm that we are currently building out. So if you wanna see something like that, come hang out. That's an upcoming live stream soon, Tia. But the thing with PTFE lined hot ends is that above 240 degrees, they start to off gas formaldehyde, which if you have birds is incredibly toxic in even very, very, very small amounts. We don't want that to happen. That's bad news bears for all parties involved. Wakey, wakey. But we do want to be certain that you protect the stuff when you can. If all you're doing is running PLA, a non all metal hot end is fine. Just understand that, that PTFE tubing will need to be replaced and it is always good to have spares. We'll link to some down below as well. Capricorn is my favorite. Highly recommend it, it's worth the premium. But you can also look at getting a cheaper printer that doesn't even have a flex plate. End up getting a flex plate from somebody like Wham Bam Systems, who, uh, by the way, is running a 10% off code through the end of the year, which is Musketeers 2022. Of course, that'll be down in the description as well. And they make some of the best flex plates, whether it's for FDM or resin 3D printers on the market, in my opinion. They make great silicone products as well for the slap mats, and they do have these little mini ones that look like coasters, and I want a set so I can turn them into coasters. But there's a lot of value that you can get by, instead of trusting the manufacturer to have these upgrades, to just look at getting the upgrades after the fact. But then you do have to source all the components. So again, time versus money. But if all you're gonna do is print cosplay props, maybe, you know, the odd idea here or there, parts off of printables, Thingiverse, My Mini Factory, Colts, whatever it might be, then you're honestly probably just fine with a non-all metal printer. Personally, after running non-all metal printers for quite a few years, I will never go back to a printer that is PTFE lined. I, I just won't do it. There's too much BS involved with that PTFE as it starts to wear. And from a business standpoint, we were replacing PTFE tubes, the Bowden tubes, on our printers every week or so because of all the printing that we were doing. And this was back in 2014 when we had direct drive printers that were $400. They were a little bit dangerous. In fact, I tried to light one on fire in a previous video. We'll card to that as well, talking about thermal runaway. I cheated a little bit, but it's still a fun video. You could say that video is literally fire, as the kids would say. But we also wanna figure out not just the materials, but what their expectations are for time. If they really want something to print fast, FDM's not the right answer. They need to go to resin. But, 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 resin is toxic. You guys knew where I was going with this. The big thing with resin is its toxicity. And the problem that I see with resin printers, we've talked about this multiple times on the podcast. It is not how cheap the printers have got. Resin printers are objectively incredibly cheap. And even the really cheap ones are pretty decent. You can get an Elegoo Mars for like 200 bucks. That is gonna work so damn good. And it's gonna blow anything that you can make on an FDM printer out of the water for print quality, of course in its small build volume. But what hasn't gotten any better is the education surrounding the resins and how to handle them. And if you guys want me to do a series on handling resin prints, what is the right way to do it? You know, what is the true right way and what is the realistic way? Let me know. We'll maybe add that into the content calendar maybe sometime after to 
East Coast Rep Rap Festival, which is coming up. And if all goes well, I should be going. Everything's booked, but I got to make sure that I have the time, hopefully the extra bit of cash to get there. So we greatly appreciate any support that you guys would be willing to give to the channel. We also want to look at what their expectations are for quality, right? Again, resin will produce amazing quality where FDM might not have the best quality. Now, don't get me wrong. You can make some gorgeous prints like this Ice Dragon by Photos Mint, which you guys just saw yesterday in the time lapse. But this thing is beautiful. But as you get in there real close, yeah, you can see some little issues with cooling, you know, mainly on the back of the spikes there. Uh, but you know, overall, the model looks great. Is this good enough? If this is good enough for you, great. FDM is perfect. Now again, well-tuned Prusa printer, so take that with a grain of salt. We want to look at usages as well. If they want something that's going to be a functional part, maybe they want to do something for their car, something for the home, maybe a shelf bracket, resin is not the right way to go. Now, yes, there are really good, high-quality resins out there that will give you all the engineering properties you need. And in fact, I'm going to be testing one. This Meyer Makes resin is supposed to be damn near peak, and that's polyether ether ketone, which is uh, crazy stuff. And if this stuff stands up to what it is, even though it's $140 for a liter, it's going to basically change the game for resin printing. But the way that I look at it currently, resin printing, by and large, is mostly for stuff that you just want to look pretty. Yes, you can get engineering resins like the Soraya Tech Blue, or you could even use Formlabs resin if you're willing to pay the premium. I'm not. But Soraya Tech Blue is a good resin, but over time, it will get brittle as it continues to get exposed to UV. You can, of course, seal it with paint or a clear coat that will protect it from UV, but eventually you will still have these problems. With FDM, a lot of the materials are pretty much impervious to UV, unless you're talking about extreme cases, right? PLA, pretty much totally fine outside, as long as it doesn't get too hot. PETG, totally fine outside. Again, gotta make sure it doesn't get too hot. ABS will degrade with UV exposure, but it will take a little bit. And if you're going to do ABS, do ASA, which is the UV stable cousin of the unstable ABS. But those are both very complicated materials to print. They have a tendency to warp and become a real problem. All of these things work together to the, hey Grant, what 3D printer should I get? And the answer is always, it depends. And I go through these questions with people and try to figure it out. I'd love to know what you guys think. What are some questions that you would love to see added to this list? And leave them in a comment down below. I believe that there's a lot of value out there from printers like the Prusa Mini. However, the price point is a bit of a sticker shock for a lot of people when they look on Amazon and they can see printers for as low as $100 or less. And that's why I think the Neptune 3, now again, I've never tested it, but the people that I do know that have them seem to like them quite a bit, is a pretty good bang for the buck machine, all things considered. Now, that is, of course, pending a review, so hopefully we get one in. Elegoo, if you're watching this, send me one. I'd love to take a look at it. But of course, you can spend less money. You can wait for deals. You can watch the 3D printing deals Twitter account like I do and make poor financial decisions. But ultimately, the thing of why I ask the questions is, and why we as 3D Musketeers do not really sell 3D printers, it is because I don't want to service them. I don't want to deal with when the person has a problem. Now, they're still going to call me anyways because... That's what we do. We help people and I'm happy to help people, but we also need to not waste a bunch of company resources fixing a $200 3D printer. It, it, it doesn't work financially. So when we make a suggestion to somebody, I make sure I say it up front. We do not repair printers. I would recommend this in your budget. However, I recommend that you save your money until you're able to get a better printer for the money itself. I'm sure I've missed some good printers out there. I don't really look too much into the really affordable consumer grade machines. So I'd love to know your opinions on that as well down below. And we are going to be running an entire like back to basics how to series. The next video in the series is going to be tips for noobs. If you're just starting out in the industry, what you want to look for, what you want to make sure in terms of tools that you have and some tips and tricks to help you suck less because this is not a plug and play thing if you expect 3d printing to be plug and play 
and you don't buy a Prusa, even Prusas are not going to be 100% plug and play. Sometimes they'll have their problems. I think you're going to have a bad time. So I think a lot of the, hey, what printer should I buy? I think more of it is setting those expectations for what should be typical in the industry more than specifically recommending brands. When we talk to people about it, we recommend brands on a large basis, right? I say Elgu makes a pretty decent printer, the Neptune 2, the 2S, and the 3 are great machines at varying price points, and they have some of them used on their website for pennies on the dollar. But if you do move around a lot, a printer with auto bed leveling is gonna be required. One with ball bearings should be something that you look for. I don't really like V-wheels. I think they add a lot of slop at the end of the day, but I do think there is a lot of value to these more affordable printers. I'd love to know what you recommend and why down in those comments below. That's all I got for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to become one of these elite musketeers, click those links down in that description, join our Patreon, and you can have your name scrolling right next to me as I'm doing this outro. Right below me will be my first look at the Ender 3 V2, a printer that I think punches well above its price class, but I think it's got a lot more competition now. And right next to that will be my video upgrading the Prusa Mini with a Revo and the MM10 upgrade kit. I'll see you all down in those comments. I really want to hear your opinions, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.